On today's show, I'm honored to give you a private tour of one of Alabama's most iconic homes, the Alabama Governor's Mansion. We will take a look at the official residence of the Alabama Governor and First Lady from a historical perspective, focusing on its rich history as well as the beautiful public rooms and their furnishings contained in this house museum known as the People's House. Welcome to Southern Heirlooms. I'm Ken Rivenbark. Welcome to Southern Heirlooms with Ken Rivenbark. The Alabama Governor's Mansion was originally built as a private home in 1907 by Brigadier General Robert F. Ligon. He was a prominent Alabamian working as an attorney and over his lifetime served as mayor of Tuskegee, clerk of the state Supreme Court, and adjunct general to Alabama during the Spanish-American War. The house was built by T. Weatherly Carter of the Montgomery architectural firm of Benjamin Smith and T. Weatherly Carter. General Ligon built his new home on land deeded from the United States government to Rachel Hatchett and husband on October 10, 1818, the year before Alabama Territory became a state. On October 13, 1950, the mansion was purchased from Emily Ligon Foley by the state of Alabama for $100,000. Spending an additional $130,000, the state renovated and refurbished it for the occupancy of the governor's official residence, becoming the second home utilized as the Alabama governor's mansion. The mansion is designed in the colonial revival style that began in the Northeast and became popular after the National Centennial Celebrations of 1876. The style is eclectic in that it makes liberal use of various period details and is characterized by symmetry, classical details, columns, and a portico. The facade of the mansion appears much as it did when T. Weatherly Carter designed it. The recent entrance is through a portico whose four fluted columns with composite capitals support a pediment. There is a central balcony at the second floor level. It and two flanking ba balconies are supported by large scroll brackets. The entablatures which is the superstructure which lies upon the columns is supported by fluted pilasters with composite capitals. It also utilizes both dental and egg and dart moldings and contains medallions in the classic style. Porticochier flanks the center block on the south. The Porticochier roof, entablature, and wood balustrade are supported by fluted columns with scamozzi capitals and their angular scrolls. When we return, we will move inside and begin touring the interiors of this beautiful house museum known as the House of the People. Friends of the Alabama Governor's Mansion is a 501c3 nonprofit organization that works to promote and preserve the historic Alabama Governor's Mansion complex located on South Perry Street in downtown Montgomery's Garden District. Today, in cooperation with the Office of the First Lady of Alabama and the Governor's Mansion Authority, the Friends of the Alabama Governor's Mansion continues to protect the historical character of the Governor's Mansion as a symbol of Alabama pride and heritage, as well as an appropriate setting for carrying out official and ceremonial functions for the state. As a nonprofit arm of the mansion, the Friends of the Governor's Mansion Board of Directors work to raise funds and awareness for mansion projects and initiatives. For more information on how you can volunteer, become a member, or support the organization, go to alabamagovernorsmansion.org. Be a part of our state history today. Established in 1978, Randy Roper Interiors is the premier interior design firm for residential and commercial projects. The goal at Randy Roper Interiors is to work with each client to create a beautiful, warm, and comfortable space that reflects your individual tastes. Randy Roper Interiors offers one of the largest resource design libraries in Alabama and is located at 311 North Jefferson Street in downtown Huntsville. Randy Roper Interiors, where experience matters. Welcome back to Southern Heirlooms. 
Today we're visiting one of Alabama's most notable homes, the Alabama Governor's Mansion. The first governor of Alabama to move into the current governor's mansion in 1951 was Governor Seth Gordon Persons. At his inauguration, he stood on the steps of the Capitol for the oath of office in a plain business suit instead of the customary morning coat and top hat. He told the assembled crowd that he had no further political ambitions and would thus devote all of his energy to Alabama. Persons had campaigned for governor on the slogan, I keep my promises. He did just that by providing four years of sound conservative government, the last relatively quiet administration before the turbulent 60s. The silver haired persons brought a no nonsense business approach to the governor's office. Citing the ongoing conflict in Korea, he rejected the usual inaugural parade and black tie ball for a simple open house reception at the new governor's mansion, deeming it the people's house. Many of the silver items that were utilized for the inaugural open house are still part of the permanent collection of the governor's mansion house museum. I'm standing just inside the front doors of the mansion in the reception hall which features a central and most impressive architectural feature of the house, the grand and exceptionally wide staircase that divides the first landing. The landing separates the public rooms from the private living quarters. The reception hall has elaborate woodwork and oak parquet floors with cherry and mahogany inlay banding. The columned wood carved accents and capitals blend beautifully with the highly detailed moldings and ceiling medallions. The French crystal chandelier over the staircase and the pair of wall sconces originally hung in the Roosevelt Hotel in New Orleans and are circa 1900. The crystal bronze 16 light chandelier has a crystal vessel shaped central shaft that supports four arms that branch into three lights as well as four additional single arms. The pair of bronze and crystal wall sconces feature scrolled acanthus leaf cast branches with pear-shaped prisms and were purchased for the mansion by First Lady Alice Persons. The hand-tufted area carpet in the entry of the reception hall was manufactured by Patrick James Incorporated in Atlanta, Georgia in 2003 and depicts the coat of arms of Alabama. The coat of arms of Alabama shows a shield with the symbols of five nations that held sovereignty over what is now the state of Alabama. France, Spain, the United Kingdom, the Confederate States of America, and the United States of America. The ship depicts the Baudin, which brought the French colonists who established the first permanent European settlements in the state. Below is the state motto in Latin, meaning, we dare defend our rights. The carpeting for the grand staircase was custom designed by Jimmy Sellers in 2013. He used motifs from the elaborate molding as inspiration for his design. The chandelier hanging the entryway is French and is also circa 1900. It is a neoclassical cast brass four-tier waterfall chandelier with glass prisms. State inventory indicates the chandelier was hanging in the reception hall in 1950 and the low inventory number indicates that the object has been part of the mansion collection since its early days. The tall mahogany case clock appears on the staircase landing in a Montgomery advertiser photograph dated October 22, 1950. Another photograph depicts the wedding party of the Legan's daughter, Emily, posing on the stairs on September 18, 1919. The long place case clock is visible on the stairs behind them. Although the tall case clock is not mentioned in the 1950 inventory of objects that transcended with the house, photographic evidence strongly suggests that this clock belonged to the Ligons, making it original to the house. When we return, we will be touring the formal dining room. Stay with us. The Scott and Zelda Fitzgerald Museum encapsulates the dreams, the triumphs, and the tragedies of one of America's most noted couples, the darlings of the jazz age, 
Scott and Zelda created a reputation for embodying the excesses of the 1920s as well as the crash that followed in the 1930s. The Scott and Zelda Fitzgerald Museum is the only museum in the world dedicated to F. Scott Fitzgerald and his wife Zelda. Visit the museum today in Montgomery, Alabama. Peace Loving Animals is an animal rescue facility located in Tanner, Alabama, where we educate the community on the humane treatment of animals, caring for abandoned strays, and finding homes for unwanted yet lovable pets. You could be the voice for an abandoned animal by supporting Peace Loving Animals today. This advertisement is proudly sponsored by Keystone Laboratories of Decatur, Alabama, helping protect the public health and environment through quality testing. Welcome back to Southern Heirlooms. I'm Ken Rivenbart. Many first families and their guests have enjoyed meals and camaraderie in the mansion's dining room. I want to highlight some of the exceptional pieces that I think are most interesting, beginning with this dining table and its settings. The mahogany banquet-sized dining table is supported on three spiral carved pedestals ending in four legs with carved knees and pad feet. The 16 Queen Anne style dining chairs feature petty point seat covers that were made by the Mountain Brook chapter of the American Needlepoint Guild and depict scenes from Alabama's history. First Lady Mary Jo Patterson commissioned the construction of the dining room table and chairs by Southern Craftsman's Company of Andalusia, Alabama in 1959. The beautiful Czechoslovakian crystal chandelier over the dining table presents a crystal crown draped with cut spear prisms. According to the 2010 Docents Report, the chandelier has 1,368 prisms. The chandelier was purchased for the state dining room by First Lady Cornelia Wallace in 1975. The four branch silver apron in the center of the table includes acanthus leaf cover branches ending with acanthus leaf form bowls above a foliate covered base raised on four lion's heads. The cut glass crystal bowl resting on the central pedestal is original to the piece. The ornate apron is circa 1900. The sterling silver flatware on the table is made by Reed and Barton in the Marlboro pattern. The set consists of 177 pieces and contains 16 place settings with service pieces. The back of each piece is engraved with the name Alabama. The beautiful pair of candelabras are English and date to 1850. They are silver on copper from Sheffield and are 20 inches wide and extremely ornate. The candelabras appear on a sideboard in a 1951 photograph of Governor Person's family eating dinner in the state dining room. The candelabras were purchased for the governor's mansion by Mrs. Frank Dixon in 1939 from Klein's Jewelers. Governor Dixon served from 1939 through 43 and resided in the Sable House, the former governor's mansion. In addition, the formal dining table is set with the formal state china featuring the Great Seal of Alabama. Now I want to share some of my favorite silver pieces in the museum collection, beginning with this beautiful sterling Repuse coffee service. Documented evidence indicates that this coffee service was purchased for the governor's mansion by Mrs. Frank Dixon in 1939. The five-piece coffee service consists of a water kettle on stand, coffee pot, teapot, sugar bowl, and lid and creamer. The hallmarks on this coffee service inform us that the service is sterling silver and was made in 1859 by Martin Hall and Company of Sheffield, England. Next, I want to share with you Governor Person's inaugural coffee urn. Documented evidence proves that this urn was purchased in 1939 by Mrs. Frank Dixon. The urn appears in a 1951 photograph of the open house celebrating the new governor's mansion during the Person's administration. In addition, this silver-footed punch bowl with repousse design was made in Sheffield, England around 1930. It was also used in celebrating the new governor's mansion in 1951. Museum archives indicate the punch hole was purchased for the governor's mansion in 1947 during the administration of Big Jim Folsom. The House Museum has a wonderful silver collection of items that were once on the USS Alabama. This round sterling silver tray engraved 
from the loyal hearts of the people of Alabama to the USS Battleship Alabama, whose officers and men protect the honor of our country in war and peace, 1942. In addition, this pair of sterling five light candelabras engraved USS Alabama over the great seal of Alabama is in the bright cut method. There's also a set of 22 sterling silver punch cups engraved with the USS Alabama and the seal. All of the USS Alabama sterling silver pieces were made by the Watson Company of Attleboro, Maryland during the 1910 to 1938 time frame. All of these items were donated to the USS Alabama by the citizens of the state of Alabama around 1942 time period. When we return, we will visit the First Lady's Parlor. Stay with us. Rivenbark and Roper Antiques began serving customers June 2006 and is regarded as Huntsville's finest antique gallery. The shop represents high quality antiques from the 18th to the early 20th centuries, the largest collection of silver in North Alabama, Chinese and Japanese export porcelains, and original art from around the world. From day one, the business has focused on three principles that have established the essence of Rivenbark and Roper Antiques. They take great pride in providing their clients with the highest quality merchandise at the lowest prices possible, offering hospitality and personal service to build a relationship of trust and to celebrate with customers the joy of bringing beauty, style, and elegance to their homes. Rivenbark and Roper Antiques has gained the reputation of offering a high quality product with extensive personal service. The shop has lived by the strict policy of not selling reproduction furniture and abiding by the original guidelines of not selling furniture newer than 1940. Their strengths are reflected in their dedicated customers. Customers know that when they engage in business with Rivenbark and Roper, they can count on truth, knowledgeable information, and customer dedication. To say you've worked too hard to let this economy jeopardize your future would be an understatement. While you don't have control over today's markets, you do have control over how well prepared you are for the future. That's where the Keen Group at UBS Financial Services Incorporated in Huntsville can help. Wealth Management Advisors Penny and Tom Keen will create a plan that can help you weather the uncertain markets while keeping you on track. Call or visit our website, The Keen Group at UBS Financial Services Incorporated in Huntsville. Member FINRA SIPC. Welcome back to Southern Heirlooms. I'm Ken Rivenbark. As we continue our tour of the Alabama Governor's Mansion, I want to highlight some of the unique furnishings from both the First Lady's Parlor and the beautiful drawing room. The late 19th century gilt frame over mantel mirror is original to the house and is circa 1860 to 1900. It is a Victorian Rococo carved mirror. It presents a crest surmounted with cascading flowers, leafage, and scrolls with Godrun sides, leading to additional scrolls and leafage at its base. This mirror is original to the house, again built in 1907, and is one of a pair. It made, its mate hangs on the fireplace mantel in the drawing room. They also match the two pier mirrors in the drawing room. The French Louis XVI style crystal and bronze chandelier in the First Lady's Parlor dates to the early 20th century. The chandelier is characterized by crystal beaded chains made of baguette or square bead prisms, cascading from its crown to the pierced bronze ring and down to the bronze finial. This federal mahogany bow front chest is circa 1820. It is in the style of Samuel McIntyre of Salem, Massachusetts. It is ornately carved and it holds its original hardware. Next, I wanna show you a handsome federal solid mahogany swivel top card table made in Salem, Massachusetts. The hinge top has outset rounded corners and a serpentine front. It is attributed to John Seymour of Salem, Massachusetts and is a close match to the bow front chest. Both of these pieces were donated to the mansion in 1979. This beautiful painting is called Calendulus by Carrie Hill of Birmingham, Alabama and dates to the 1920s. It's a floral still life oil painting on canvas of calendulas or marigolds. Painting, the painting depicts loosely arranged calendulas in a blue pottery pitcher with flowers in shades of orange and yellow. 
The artist Carrie Hill was born in Vance, Alabama, but lived her entire life in Birmingham. I'm standing in the drawing room, and as I mentioned from the First Lady's Parlor, the matching mirror over mantel is directly behind me. It is Victorian in the Rococo style. Each mirror rests on a low marble top table with gesso decorations of shells and foliate scrolls. They are original to the house. The room also features two original chandeliers and four matching wall sconces. They are French, circa 1900. There are Louis XV Rococo style and bronze doré. The two light wall sconces match the chandeliers. They are original to the house, and actually they appear in the Ligon family photograph taken during the period of the family ownership from 1907 to 1950. Next, I want to point out this reticulated fireplace fender with Paul feet and the brass urn finial andirons with reedy columns. They date to the early 1900s and are original to the house. A circa 1925 photograph of the Legan family sitting near the drawing room fireplace confirms that these andirons and fenders belong to the Legan family. This landscape oil painting on canvas depicts snow-capped mountains in the background and a river in the foreground in an ornate gilded frame. Regarded as one of the foremost artists of Western exploration, Thomas Moran, who lived from 1837 to 1926, created a body of work that remains a primary record of that period. The first White House of the Confederacy was the executive residence of President Jefferson Davis and family, while the capital of the Confederate States of America was in Montgomery, Alabama. Completely furnished with original period pieces from the 1850s and 1860s, the 1835 Italianate House is a beautiful old landmark in the downtown area of historic Montgomery, Alabama. The White House Association, established in 1900, has amassed one of the most comprehensive collections of artifacts of the Davis family and is one of the jewels of Montgomery, Alabama. Come visit the Little Green Store on Montesano Mountain. The Little Green Store carries art, ceramics, jewelry, and gift items representing the work of over 100 artists and artisans. Every piece is American-made, and most of the art showcases the creative pulse and energy of Huntsville and North Alabama. Engage with your community and give local artists a voice when you purchase local, high-quality, and environmentally friendly art and design. The friendly staff at the Little Green Store is eager to assist you in finding special and unique gifts for every occasion. The Little Green Store on Montesano Mountain. First Lady Diane Bentley has utilized her role in many incredible endeavors for the people of Alabama. One of them ensures the governor's mansion will be preserved and remain historically accurate. In 2011, the First Lady Diane Bentley Mansion Preservation Act created an authority responsible for maintaining and restoring the 108-year-old home to reflect its original heritage. It also required the governor's mansion be accessible to the public with tours. A group known as the Friends of the Governor's Mansion will be aiding Mrs. Bentley as they continue their work to preserve this beautiful home in Montgomery, Alabama. The governing board's mission is to protect the historical and architecturally integrity of the mansion's exterior, interior, contents, and grounds. It gives me great pleasure to welcome the First Lady of Alabama, Mrs. Diane Bentley. Mrs. Bentley, thank you so much for allowing us to come into your residence today and share this beautiful home with the people of Alabama. Well, it's my pleasure, and it's not really my residence, it's the people's house. Thank you, it, it, it is. How, actually, how many people come through the Governor's Mansion each year? Well, we think it's an average of about 10,000. We have a lot of fourth graders that tour in the spring, and then we have our Christmas tours during the month of December. So quite a few people tour our mansion. Let me add my personal gratitude to you for carrying the torch to preserve this beautiful residence and actually house museum for the people of Alabama. And I have a little gift for you. A friend of mine from Huntsville, Alabama, Becky Quinn, 
attained this from her family in the 1950s. It is from the Ligon family. We believe this was Emily Ligon's, one of her play chairs, and it is original to the, the home. And we would like to present this to the governor's mansion for their permanent collection. Well, thank you so much. I'm just thrilled because we lost a lot of the Ligon furniture, and that will be excellent to have. And uh, the school children will enjoy identifying with that piece of furniture. Thank you for allowing us again to share your home. Welcome. With a heart full of gratitude, I'm Ken Rivenbart, along with the First Lady of Alabama, Diane Bentley. The purpose of Southern Heirlooms with Ken Rivenbar is to touch and embrace lives through the celebration of family histories. Please visit our website, southernheirloomstv.com, to learn more about today's show, read our recent blogs, sign up for our e-newsletter, as well as find contact information for speaking engagements. Southern Heirlooms with Ken Rivenbar greatly appreciates your support. Thank you. Rivenbark and Roper Antiques began serving customers June 2006 and is regarded as Huntsville's finest antique gallery. The shop represents high quality antiques from the 18th to the early 20th centuries, the largest collection of silver in North Alabama, Chinese and Japanese export porcelains, and original art from around the world. From day one, the business has focused on three principles that have established the essence of Rivenbark and Roper Antiques. They take great pride in providing their clients with the highest quality merchandise at the lowest prices possible, offering hospitality and personal service to build a relationship of trust and to celebrate with customers the joy of bringing beauty, style, and elegance to their homes. Rivenbark and Roper Antiques has gained the reputation of offering a high quality product with extensive personal service. The shop has lived by the strict policy of not selling reproduction furniture and abiding by the original guidelines of not selling furniture newer than 1940. Their strengths are reflected in their dedicated customers. Customers know that when they engage in business with Rivenbark and Roper, they can count on truth, knowledgeable information, and customer dedication. Friends of the Alabama Governor's Mansion is a 501c3 nonprofit organization that works to promote and preserve the historic Alabama Governor's Mansion complex located on South Perry Street in downtown Montgomery's Garden District. Today, in cooperation with the Office of the First Lady of Alabama and the Governor's Mansion Authority, the Friends of the Alabama Governor's Mansion continues to protect the historical character of the Governor's Mansion as a symbol of Alabama pride and heritage, as well as an appropriate setting for carrying out official and ceremonial functions for the state. As a nonprofit arm of the mansion, the Friends of the Governor's Mansion Board of Directors work to raise funds and awareness for mansion projects and initiatives. For more information on how you can volunteer, become a member, or support the organization, go to alabamagovernorsmansion.org. Be a part of our state history today.